Hey guys, it's Jeff Farina with PocketNow.com, and in this video, we're going to give you a comparison of how well HTC Sense runs on the HTC Wildfire's bigger brother, the HTC Evo 4G. So, without making this video any longer, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, and it's time to jump right into doing the software comparisons on these two devices here. Now, as we've mentioned, these are both running HTC Sense, which is the same experience. However, the processor and the RAM available under each device should make a difference, and we're basically going to test that right now and see how much of a difference there actually is. So the first test we're going to do is a browser test. I'm going to go ahead and pull up each of these browsers. And we're actually going to go to pocketnow.com. All right, we're now going to press the enter button on both these devices at the same exact time. As you can see, the Wildfire is showing a stronger wireless network, so we'll see what happens. They both are on the same Wi-Fi. It looks like the Evo is pulling ahead. The Evo is definitely loading it, rendering the pictures faster. All right, now based on the status bar, the Wildfire does look closer. All right, and it looks like the Evo did win the race. The Wildfire is still going here. And what it's basically trying to render are going to be all the flash banners here and on the top of the page itself. That's where it's going to really depend on the CPU to get that going. So the main portion of the page loads no problem. It's just the flash content that can be a little bit of an issue. As you can see here, there's a little hourglass still pending. All right, and they are now fully loaded. It took the wildfire about another three or four seconds, so it wasn't too, too bad. Overall, I'd say the Evo won by about 10 seconds. This is a pretty intense page to look at, though, in terms of the flash content, the pictures that are on the page itself, the logos, etc., etc. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to zoom in using the multi-touch support on both of these. We're going to see which ones are a little smoother. And it seems that the Wildfire actually has a smoother... Well, now it starts to jerk up a little bit. has a smoother motion. However, as you can tell, hopefully you can tell, the screens... While you're zooming in with the wildfire is actually it's blurry the text is blurry it's tough to see it has to actually render that text before you can read it and that's partially had to do with the processor as well as the screen resolution itself as you can see here it's still blurry and now it has to render it in terms of the general navigation you can press the home button to get the helicopter view we're going to actually press these both at the same time right now and that was pretty comparable The Evo does seem to pull it up a little faster, however, it's not going to be night and day. Another test we're going to do are some of these social networking applications. This is something that we like to typically test out because many of us use the Twitter applications, the Facebook applications, etc. And the whole point for doing this, this sort of testing is to see if the faster processor, the 1 gigahertz processor on the Evo, is really having an upper hand over the 528 megahertz processor on the Wildfire. Common sense would say yes. However, some things are still going to load pretty close to one another, as you've already seen. Let's go ahead and pull up Twitter. And we're actually going to go to my profile, and we'll see which one will load faster. We're going to press these both at the same time. Now, it looks like the Wildfire did it sooner. However, we're now going to search for Brandon Miniman. And now we're also going to try the search functionality by searching for Brandon Miniman on the Twitter application itself. And we'll see, we're actually going to tap these at the same time, we'll see, we'll see which one actually pulls up the results under him faster. And as you can see, the Evo actually moved the screen over faster, but it looks like the Wildfire was able to actually bring the results up sooner. And that may have to do with the fact of the Wi-Fi signal. Now once again, the Wildfire is displaying full bars Wi-Fi, whereas the Evo is only displaying the three. Now, mind you, the wireless router is about 10 feet away from us, so we are pretty much right on top of it, and we are not getting full signal with the Evo. That may just be a software, or it could be a hardware effect right there that's, that's more or less inhibiting the performance on that point. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Facebook application. And that's simply just going to be by loading my profile here. And this time it looks like the Evo did pull ahead. It actually pulled over a little bit later, but it was able to load the entire feed faster. We've now gone ahead and moved into the YouTube application 
Testing out the YouTube speed is one of the tests that we really like to do here. And because this will show off the video rendering speeds as well as the data speeds itself of the device. So let's go ahead and press pocket now video. It did actually press the wildfire a split second faster. However, the Evo was still able to pull ahead. And we're going to just pick any random video here. We'll pick the very top one. And we'll see which one actually is able to load faster. Looks like the wildfire, believe it or not, pulled it up sooner. What's up guys, it's CJ from Pocket Now. Now of course we were stuck with the loud volumes on both devices, but it looks like surprisingly the wildfire was able to pull up the video, render the video sooner. They are both doing it in HQ, mind you. Some of that may have to do with the fact that the Evo has a 4.0 inch screen. The processor may have to fill up that screen, fill up that canvas more than it does on the wildfire. And now it's time to test a video game application. And to do that, we're going to use one of our favorites, which is the Asphalt 5 game. Now, as you can see here, the Gameloft logo was very cut off. Ooh, and unfortunately, this device cannot support Asphalt 5. Now, that's most likely going to be because of the screen resolution, as you saw the logo itself was cut off. So unfortunately, you're going to miss out on some of the games in that sense, and that's likely because of the resolution of this device. So because we weren't able to test out Asphalt 5, which was kind of a letdown, we're going to go ahead and test out Teeter, which are one of the applications that are included on both these devices itself. I believe it comes with HTC Sense by default. So we're going to go ahead and touch these at the same exact time. Looks like the wildfire is a little ahead here. And basically it asked us if I wanted to restart a game. However, we do not. And it looks like the wildfire was able to actually load it faster. But if you look here, it's very hard to play this through the camera. But it seems almost a little jerky, kind of like the ball was, was almost teleporting. Whereas when you play it on the Evo, it is much smoother. And the ball seems much more real. So it seems like the frame rate in this game is almost a little bit better on the Evo. And that's going to wrap it up for the software comparison on the HTC Evo versus the HTC Wildfire. Now, the results weren't necessarily conclusive. Of course, the Evo did pull ahead in many of the tests, if not all of the tests, which was to be expected. But unless you're a power user, you're really not going to know the difference itself. So if you are a power user, a device with a faster processor will really go a long way, especially if you plan on browsing a lot, looking at pictures, watching videos, playing video games, the whole nine yards. However, if this is going to be your first smartphone or your first Android device, the wildfire will definitely suffice for you. But as you saw, not every game, unfortunately, is going to be compatible, and that's going to be because of the screen size and resolution. The HTC Wildfire does have one very good thing going for it, which is why some of the specs are a little lower, and that's the price. As an unlocked device priced at only $300, you really can't complain there with what you're going to be getting. The fact that you're not going to be in a contract and still only pay $300 for a relatively top-notch device is not bad at all. Stay tuned for our next video, which will be the final video in this series, and that will be our review, our final word on the HTC Hero. As always, please give us a thumbs up on this video and leave a comment with any suggestions or questions you may have. Thanks for watching, everyone.